Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I am Pastor Peg Harvey Merles, the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together back in March when we were first on stay-at-home orders as a way to uh, remind us that we were connected, uh, even though we were separated uh, by social distancing, that we were still together. Uh, we're not alone. God is always with us. God is always loving us, and God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. So it's been uh, a little while since we've done this live. Uh, I pre-recorded all of the 12 days of Christmas with a whoosh of uh, candles burning away each day. I hope you had a lovely 12th night last night. <laughs> uh, it usually goes by without anybody even thinking about it. Uh, today is the day of Epiphany. And so got the star over one shoulder and the Holy Family. You can't really make that out, but that is the, the Holy Family there um, on the other side. And of course, a candle uh, lit to, to remind us of the light of Christ. So this morning, we're going to, to look at the story of the coming of who I lovingly call the wise guys. And this, this day is, uh, is way more important than we ever make it out to be. Uh, it is one of the high festivals, uh, like Pentecost. We, it's, it's uh, one of the most important days of the church year, and we barely give it a, a nod as, as we uh, move through. But this, this day um, of the coming of the Magi is celebrated in Orthodox communities the way we celebrate Christmas Day. So this is the day, which actually makes a whole lot more sense than Christmas Day. This is the day that uh, presents are exchanged in the Orthodox tradition. Makes a whole lot of sense since the wise guys were the ones who brought the, the presents. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's, um, that's one aspect of the day. Um, before I go into uh, the next important aspect of the day. I'm going to read the scripture for the day. And that is Matthew chapter 2. And it is only in Matthew that we get the story of the Magi. So there's there's significance to that for, for Matthew. And we'll talk about that a, a little bit. And this is not a part of any of the other Gospels. So, and there's significance in that as well. So this morning, let us read Matthew chapter two. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea. 
for so it had been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. All right. Good morning, Mary. Hope that knee is feeling good, or better at least. All right, so the other significant part of this story and why it um, is an important part of our Christian tradition um, is that during this period of time, religion was, good morning, Lorene. Uh, religion was a national thing. So each country, each nation had its own gods, had its own religion, its own um, way of relating to the divine, um, at, which usually was very closely connected to the military um, and understanding that if the military won, then God was on their side. And if the military lost, God was not on their side. Good morning, Debbie. Um, so the importance of, of this story then is that these are not Jews. The, the wise men, the magi, the sages, um, however we want to, good morning, Jean, good to see you there. Um, however we want to translate this word, um, Uh, they were, so wise men or wise people um, is a really interesting uh, and excellent way to, to look at uh, this story. Um, they were wise, they were learned, so they were scholars, um, astrologers, astronomers, they watched the skies for more like astrologers, actually, because they were watching the sky for um, indications of the coming of whatever, the, the future. Um, but they were, they were learned um, and they were foreign. They were from another country. And so instead of Jesus then being simply king of Israel, Jesus then becomes the, the king of all nations. And that is as radical today as it was back then. Uh, because we are very nationalistic and um, it's me and mine first. Um, but understanding that, that Jesus is not about um, establishing which nation is the most important, the most powerful, the most um, good, most beloved. Uh, and we also have to understand that nations uh, were understood to be a grouping of people. So uh, not, not an institution established with the constitution or whatever, laws, whatever, 
Um, but a nation was a group of people. It's like the church. The church is the people. Um, and so this is a, a radical change. It's a radical change for Israel. But it was a radical change that began with Isaiah. Uh, before that, it was only about the Jews, the people of Israel. And with Isaiah, through the, the um, experience of the destruction of the temple, the exile in Babylon, the return to Jerusalem, the, the scope of God's presence, God's purpose, God's world was expanded. And uh, God, the God of Israel, was not just the God of one people, but of all people. And that's what we celebrate on this day. We celebrate that, that it was foreigners who recognized who Jesus was and came to worship him. And in Matthew's gospel, we don't have the shepherds. We don't have the angels uh, going out to the shepherds. We don't have that aspect of it. Um, and each gospel was written in its own way for its own purpose, for its own community. So what's going on in Matthew's community? So Matthew's community had been... Um, persecuted and then the persecution had um, lifted a bit and the people who had um, uh, who had left the church under pressure from the persecution uh, wanted to return how do you incorporate these people back into the life of the church when they um, they denounced Jesus they denounced the faith. Uh, so Matthew is really uh, expanding. You hear all sorts of stuff in Matthew about forgiving um, those who have wandered. And um, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and, and, I, and I mean this with uh, great respect and humility, that... Uh, that I think that part of this is forgiving the foreigners for being foreigners. Think about that. Um, the foreigner is frequently the um, denigrated ones. They're, they're, and it doesn't matter what country you're in, what nation you're a part of, the foreigner, the other, is always the less than. And uh, this is just, uh, we have to be very humble about this. Humility is a huge part of, of following Christ. And it has to do with the way we look at those who are not like us. Um, and so on this day, on the day of Epiphany, we celebrate that Jesus is not king of one nation, but of all nations, of all people. And if that is true, and, and I'm not saying that as in, I'm not sure of it, but because that is true, we need to completely change the way we look at the rest of the world, the way we look at the foreigner, the way we look at those who are different from us, the way we look at those who are outside of our community, um, whether that's uh, Lewiston, Idaho, the United States. You know, and this is not just a United States thing. This is uh, every nation. 
does this because we always want, you know, uh, me and mine are the best. Okay. The best. And realizing that in Christ, whew, there is no partiality. We'll be hearing that this coming Sunday on the baptism of our Lord. In God, there is no partiality. Oh, no. Wait a minute. No, that's the Sunday school lesson. I'm all mixed up. All right. So, <laughs> so celebrate the day of Epiphany. Uh, one of the traditions of this day is the blessing of houses. And so there's a, a, a process where you take a, a piece of chalk and um, you write over the, the entryway into your house, uh, the front door, whatever, on the, on the lentil uh, uh, of the house. It's uh, B plus M plus, okay, here's Balthazar. Melchior, the name of the third wise guy, I don't remember. But anyway, the, the three initials, plus, 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 and 2021, uh, and there's a, a cross in there for, for Christ. So, um, and I would say you, you don't have to do it the same way, but this that uh, blessing your home is a, a beautiful way to celebrate this day of Epiphany. All right, well, boy, I have yammered on, haven't I? Well, a lot has happened <laughs> during the 12 days of Christmas. Um, and so I want to share um, a few of them. Uh, prayer requests that I have received along the way um, back on December 28th um, uh, I received a prayer request for Nancy uh, Butenhoff Butenhoff um, who uh, was having complications blood clots uh, from COVID-19 uh, so I haven't had an update on her, but um, uh, we'll continue to uh, pray for her. Um, also, um, Loretta Stowers' sister's husband, so Loretta's brother-in-law, uh, Walter Stearns, died on the 2nd. And so we pray for uh, his family. Uh, and then also, um, those of you who remember Irma Reed, a uh, long, long time member of the church who died about a year or two ago. I can't remember exactly. She was, she was 99 <laughs> when she died. She lived a long, good life. Um, her son, Steve. Uh, contacted me. Uh, his wife, Bev, is, um, she has many health issues and is in the, her last, at least months, possibly days. Um, and so we remember her and Steve and the whole family. So what else would we like to pray about today? I don't know about you, but um, today uh, I'm praying for um, a peaceful uh, time in the Capitol uh, as the, the election is certified by Congress. What else? What else would we like to pray about today? We're kind of out of practice. 
we haven't done this in quite a while <laughs> since Christmas Eve. That's the last time we were, we did this live. Anybody have any other prayer concerns today? What, okay. My sister-in-law's uncle Walt, 70, passed from COVID yesterday. His, his aunt Sherry, now 70, home recovering from COVID. They were married. 50 years. All right. Uncle Walt. And Sherry recovering. Okay. Cousin Linda for medical issues. Friends who chose to travel uh, to Michigan to travel to return to Michigan safely. Okay. Son in law. <laughs> Okay, yeah, son-in-law. I wondered when it, it you said his. All right. All right, very good. Uh, Jolene had her last radiation treatment yesterday. Yay! All right. Again, uh, I'll start. And if there's something else, go ahead and type it in. I will check uh, before I close the prayer and add anything in that you might, you might type in. The Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day marked by the beauty of a star uh, that led wise men to Bethlehem to worship the king, not only of Israel, but of the whole world. Lord, we, we pray that we can humbly worship our King Jesus. And remember that it's not about me and mine, but that the entire world, all nations are under your loving care. Lord, we pray this day for um, a peaceful certification by Congress of the presidential election. Um, we pray that you know, whatever needs to happen will happen and we can move forward as a nation. We lift up the Reed family and pray for comfort for Bev as uh, she lives in her last days, weeks, and months. And we lift up Steve and the entire family um, as they, uh, they are saddened by her illness and by the coming of her death. Uh, so we ask for strength for them for these days, weeks, and months. We lift up the Stearns family as they mourn the death of Walter, uh, and we pray for comfort for them. We especially lift up his wife, Sharon, um, that she might be strengthened in this time. We lift up Nancy Butenhoff, uh, who has been struggling with uh, the side effects of COVID-19 
and uh, pray that she will heal completely and the blood clots uh, will not um, cause her any more trouble. We lift up Uncle Walt, um, the family of Uncle Walt who died of COVID-19. We lift up his wife, Sherry, who is recovering from COVID and pray for complete healing for her. Be with the family as uh, they mourn Walt's death. We lift up uh, cousin Linda uh, and pray for uh, her medical issues that they might be resolved. We lift up Lorene's friends who um, are traveling to Michigan and uh, we pray that uh, they would be safe and healthy upon their return. And we lift up Jolene as we celebrate the last radiation treatment uh, for her breast cancer that she had yesterday. We give you thanks for the medical uh, possibilities that can uh, heal all sorts of things these days. All of these things we lift up to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, my dear friends, thank you for being back together with me. And I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and that you celebrated the full 12 days and that this day of Epiphany will be a revelation for you. My friends. Remember, be kind, wash your hands, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Remember your neighbors, share the good news, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.